Hello and welcome to the Launchpad. This is an offshoot of the Startup Storefront podcast, where we talk to the founders of companies that are just getting started and whose stories we find compelling. Today we talk with Ingrid and Alana, co-founders of Two Soul. It was Ingrid's own battle with Crohn's disease that led her to take a deep dive into her own nutrition and develop a smoothie recipe that would act as a supplement replacement and be the cornerstone to a clean and healthy lifestyle. She was selling curated smoothies to private clientele when she met Ilana, who was working at a three Michelin star restaurant in Napa Valley. Together, they grew Two Soul into a brand that focuses on nutrition as a path to wellness and happiness. If you'd like to try Two Soul for yourself, you're in luck because they're offering our listeners $30 off their month supply box using the code startup to storefront. That's enough time to start seeing real results from the smoothies. Once again, that's $30 off the month supply using the code startup to storefront. So without further ado, I present to you our conversation with Ingrid and Alana. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we have another Launchpad episode featuring the founders of Two Soul. Either one of you can take the question, just tell us a little bit about the company and what Two Soul is. Thank you so much for having us. I'm super excited to be here and excited to uh, share our story. So we started our company a little bit, uh, I think we are hitting our year mark in a few days. And so it's been a long journey to start this company and it's been a lot of fun. And we've learned so much when it comes to sourcing. And I personally love connecting with, with people that are going through this journey, that, the journey that I went through. And uh, I guess we could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, let's do it. What led you to want to start the company or solving your own problem? I know we talked a little bit about it, but give us a, give us a window. Yeah, so I didn't start to so as just thinking that I was going to go in there as a business. Mm -hmm. It was more of a, I mean, I had a lot of struggle. I struggled with a lot of IBS issues, one of them being uh, Crohn's disease. And I also had a postpartum depression and I had a heterotopic pregnancy. And for those of you that don't know what a heterotopic pregnancy is, basically a simultaneous pregnancy with an implantation on, a, on another site. So mine was in the fallopian tube. So that had to be removed. And so wow. it was, I was basically Humpty Dumpty and I had so many issues. And so I was looking to, like many people, and there's a whole movement of biohacking. I don't know if you're familiar with that, mm -hmm. but the whole movement of stop relying on other people or outside sources to fix you. It's connecting back with your body and trying to fix yourself, trying to connect the dots. And so I was left like that, trying to connect the dots because I went through so many doctors, went through so many surgeries, trying to figure out. And the only answer that I was getting was, well, this is how you are. These are your genetics. There's nothing you can do about it. Wow. And so just imagine going to going through that, going through an expert and an expert telling you that you start I'd to fire them. I, I would just fire everybody if they said that to me. Right. <laughs> you start to believe that. And then you go into the, um, I mean, I started going on Google and researching Crohn's and there was no, every website said it cannot be cured. It cannot mm -hmm. be cured. This is uncurable. And so just imagine, you know, I, I said to myself, there, there's no way, there has to be an answer to this. It has to be a way out. Otherwise I, I don't see myself surviving. I was at that time, I was basically my rock bottom. I told myself that year, if I don't do anything because it's very painful, if you don't know anyone with Crohn's disease, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about it. It's so painful that everything that you eat feels like a Brillo pad going through your intestines. And you can't have relationships with people because if I'm trying to talk to you, like I'm talking to you now, I would constantly be, talk, uh, be, be thinking about my stomach hurting and excusing myself to the bathroom. And so there was no way I was able to have relationships with people. And at the time I was a, a brand new mom. And so the only thing that I cared about was to be a mom. It's like, how do I fix this issue so I could have the energy and I could have the bonding that I need to have with my son so I could be present because I was not present. I was mentally not there. 
and physically too. And so I had to figure it out out of my own survival and I couldn't rely on somebody else to fix me because most of us want that doctor or that guru to figure out what is wrong with our bodies. And we're looking for that silver bullet to fix us. And then we just want to stay in that comfort zone. Okay, just give me that medicine so I could continue being in my comfort zone and I could continue living my, my, my regular life. So yeah, so I had that humbling experience of hitting the absolute rock bottom, which took me to a completely different journey in my life. So my, my background at the time I was doing uh, real estate and graphic design. So six years ago, I wouldn't have called it biohacking. I would have called it, you know, a desperation to find an answer. So if you would have asked me at that time, because I was 29 years old at the time, it's like, how Ingrid, how old are you? I would have told you, I feel like I'm 80 years old. I, mm. If I went down the block, I would run out of breath. I couldn't lift anything. I felt like I was in bed pretty much most of the time. One realization that I had was, so I went, someone told me there's this, the best doctor in LA. This person is the best gastrointestinal doctor. You need to go to this person. And, like a gastroenterologist? Um, yes. I went to, I mean, it took me about eight months to get an appointment. And I was like, she's going to fix me. This is it. This is going to be, she's going to tell me everything that's wrong with me. Mm. And then she's going to give me that, that she's going to fix me. So I walked in there. So excited. I had made a list of everything that I was eating, my routine. And then I walked into her consultation and it only took, a, it took her five minutes. She looked at me and she goes, well, you have Crohn's. So I'm just going to prescribe you with uh, steroids and then come back and see me in another six months. <laughs> and I looked at her. She was like walking me out of her office. I was like, well, wait, 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 wait. Are you sure it has nothing to do with food? Like I have a whole list here. She's like, no, honey, this has nothing to do with food. So just get the steroids and get out of my office pretty much. I mean, I took the steroids and I was on them for, I was in a lot of medications at the time. I mean, it fixed some of the Crohn issues, but it gave me an avalanche of other stuff. I mean, it, it made me worse. My depression, my suicidal thoughts mm. was, it was getting really, really bad. So I've never done New Year's resolution, but it was January when I said to myself, I have to do something because otherwise there's no point to live. There's no point to life. This is how sick I was. Mm -hmm. This is how debilitating. You tell a doctor like, look, I can't even like think straight. I'm, I'm, my brain is super foggy. I'm tired. They would, have sent it, they would have sent me to a psychiatrist or to get a brain scan, but there's nothing wrong with the brain. It's just, there's just so much you hope my whole system was shut down. And so the first thing I did was, okay, I wrote down all the symptoms that I had. I have inflammation because that's what Crohn's disease is just chronic inflammation. I have gut dysbiosis. I have cognitive decline. I have oxidative stress. And I started making a list of my ailments and I said, okay, so I know that Eastern medicine has alternatives there's other stuff other than than medications because medications is basically plant medicine that has been synthetically done in a lab it's completely isolated and super concentrated so it throws you off balance right and so pharmaceutical companies cannot patent this plant medicines because it's you can't patent that you can't make money off of it mm -hmm. and so I look, I was looking into Chinese medicine and I looked into Ayurveda medicine. I looked into Aztec medicine. And, and one of the things that I realized is like, whoa, these types of medicine have many commonalities. You know, the focus of the systems is on the person as a whole rather than the disease. Mm. So the systems fundamentally aim to promote health and enhance the quality of life. That's, that's what it is. So because everything is connected and we just tend to isolate the symptom and uh, treating it like it's a separate entity. But I like that concept of this, this, this really old schools of medicine. And so I started to look into plants and I'm not talking about artichokes. I'm not talking about lettuce. I'm talking about the plants that we don't consume you know, on your standard American diet, these plants don't exist. Most people don't even know what they are. And so I started looking into, okay, so what are these plants that, that are known to lower inflammation? So I started making a list. Okay, what are these plants that are known to enhance cognitive health? And so I started putting together 
recipes for myself. And at the time I, I could only have smoothies because if I had a bowl of solids, uh, there's no way my stomach could break them down. And so I said, okay, so how can I have all these medicines as my breakfast? How can I mix them all into one single meal that I could assimilate and that I could, you know, I could, that, that, that could help me and I could diversify my diet because there's no, if you look at your diet, we pretty much eat the same thing every single day. That's our comfort food. We pretty much eat cauliflower three times a week. <laughs> you just look at your diet and make a list and it's basically the same. Mm -hmm. And so in order to diversify your gut and make your gut healthy, you need to feed your biome and your biome need a lot of different antioxidants, different types of fibers. Fiber doesn't exist, it's fibers. And so you need all kinds of food that could enhance your gut. And so I started looking into that and I started making myself these smoothies. And I want to say that within, I, I want to say within a month and a half after taking the smoothies every single day, I started seeing a really drastic change. I started to feel more energetic. I lost about 30 pounds. Most importantly, I was feeling more positive. The fog that I had in my brain was like, completely opening up. And so I started to get super excited. And after like two months, people wouldn't recognize me. Mm. I would go to the, down the farmer's market and they would look at me. It's like, what did you do? Like, who are you? I want to know everything that you're doing. And so I started going around Malibu and sharing my smoothies to people. I was like, okay, just tell me what's wrong with you. I, I, I could figure out a smoothie based on your ailment. Well, I'll just jump in and I'll say something. We talked about a little bit about Good Milk on the podcast. She had IBS and same thing. I mean, she was going to doctors for years before she could solve anything. And, and she really liked almond milk and she was going to the store and buying what was promoted as like organic and super clean almond milk. And she was getting sick and still. And so she, that, that's what kind of led her on her journey to create her own thing. Oh yeah. It, you know, I, I come across people like this all the time in my community where for sure. it's, we're so sick and tired of chasing symptoms with pharmaceuticals and taking control of our own bodies, which is the most important part because the moral of the story is that no one's going to be able to fix you. There's not going to be a guru. There's not going to be a doctor that's going to come into to your life and be like, okay, let me see that. Every, let me look at your whole history and your whole childhood history and your, your past traumas and this and that. And right. let's figure it out. Like you have to be the one that connects all the dots because you're the only one that's going to know yourself more than anyone else. And so it was so important to me because we absolutely need these drugs. And I'm talking about all these active ingredients that come from these plants. Mm -hmm. We need plant medicine. And as humans, we have tremendous plant medicine deficiency. So like a vitamin deficiency, we have a natural pharmaceutical deficiency. And this is when pharmaceutical companies are able to then sell it back to us. So we end up getting them in the form of pills, which are too isolated and too concentrated that they throws out of balance. And so we're not able to do what indigenous people used to do or still do in some parts of the world, which is get the medicine and the food together in one place. So to me, that is the most important part of health to have both in one place. And that, that's the basis for the smoothies. How do I get medicine and, and food together in one place? And at, at what point for you, either one of you, did you decide, you know, I think this could be a business, right? So you started to see your own results and you were kind of experimenting on yourself and, and it seems like things are going really well. At what point, I know you're probably at the farmer's market telling other people what to do, but at what point were you like, maybe this is bigger than just. Oh, I don't helping. think like that. That's basically why Alana came into my life because that's not my mentality. Mm -hmm. um, I was just giving them out for free and just giving wow. it to friends. And so her dad is one of the most genius venture capitalists I've ever met. And he looked at me and he said, have you ever thought about making this into a product? And I said, I have no idea. I mean, when I was 20 years old, I started a swimsuit company. And the reason why I didn't make it is because I ran out of inventory because I was giving it away to friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I, I don't think that way. And so I think Alana could say more about that. Yeah. What happened? How did you get involved? And then at what point were you like, oh, there's something here. Let's, let's go ahead and take it to that next level. 
Sure. So I had moved back to LA uh, right before I met Ingrid, actually. And I was up in the Napa Valley for a couple of years working in food and wine up there. And so when I came back to Los Angeles, I had really missed, you know, health and wellness and nutrition and a focus on just how you take care of your body, which I think um, it's not really what Napa is known for. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful place, but I came back with my own set of health issues. And so I, you know, it's similar to Ingrid as a female looking for something that would help me get back to a healthier space, tried a lot of different things on the market and just never felt that anything was effective in bringing my health back. You know, I had no energy. I was extremely stressed. I had gut issues, hormone issues, you name it, but everything was very generic and like utilitarian and made for the masses or men, if I'm being honest. And so when I came back, was talking to a lot of different wellness companies, wanted to get back into the space. I had been in it uh, before moving to the Napa Valley. And I just didn't find any companies I believed in. I didn't find any companies that had the same type of heart and passion behind it as uh, what Ingrid was doing. Not that it's a bad thing, but they all had their eyes on how can we grow this thing very, very large and sell it to Nestle. And I think that's fine, but I don't, that's not where I felt I belong. That's not the products that were helping me right. in my own life. What was helping me was what Ingrid was mixing up in her kitchen down the street. And so I really felt committed to helping more people. And I felt like that was the medium that we through which we could do it because it was so potent. It was so effective and it was so sustainably sourced. And I just wanted to help more women is what it came down to. And it felt like the right way to do it. So if I could work with her to set up, you know, distribution manufacturing and everything else that goes into it, that's really where I wanted to spend my time. I love that. I guess at that point, what was kind of like the first step? Did you guys try to raise capital? Did you bootstrap it? How did you guys go about just getting? Bootstrapped it. Yeah. I mean, I think we were wonderfully naive when we started it. I think we kind of sat in the kitchen and did math and thought, okay, if you know it costs us this much to make it and we sell it for this much, we're going to be fine. We only need to put in you know, this much each. Mm. And as they say, what it always takes longer and twice as long and twice as much money as you think it's going to take. That's accurate. I think yeah. um, it's better to not know that sometimes in advance and just just full fully go into it. But yeah, we've been bootstrapping it completely for the past forever. So um, that's not the long term plan, of course. Our priority was to grow a profitable business from the very beginning, and that's what we're committed to doing. But I think you also do reach those points at which you stunt your own growth if you don't go raise capital. So we're we're kind of at that space between, you know, let's bootstrap and be profitable and build a stable business. And then how can we actually help more people? Probably not without taking that next step. Yeah, I think that's so true. I mean, we've had a lot of companies on the podcast and there's really two groups. There's there's one group of, of entrepreneurs that I don't know why, but they're really committed to bootstrapping and it's almost like they want to earn it. And, and generally speaking, that means in year six or seven is when they finally hit. Whereas there's a whole another group that realizes in order for me to make it, in order for me to help millions of people, we need capital. And that group just goes so hard into raising capital in like year one, year two in a big way. And then what they're pitching to investors is not, hey, we have this one product we want to get off the ground. What they're pitching to investors is like, look, we're starting a lifestyle company with this whole brand around it. And it's those companies that I've kind of been able to take out that they've, they've basically saved five years just by changing their mindset. And I think, I mean, I don't know how old you guys are, but the way I look at business is you have chapters of your life. And so this could be one chapter, you know, two soul could be one chapter. And as, as entrepreneurs, you'll, you'll want to solve other problems later. Right. And so the way I look at it is like, just grow and learn as much as you can quickly don't be afraid to raise that capital. And at the end of the day, you're going to help more people and acquire a lot of knowledge, like in a much, much faster way, just by kind of biting the bullet. I mean, for us, you know, we're in this time when we've watched so many companies raise exorbitant amount of money and not focus on profitability. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of reaching the end of that phase where, you know, the, what you're looking at is very different. And I think for us, we, you know, we know the end of that's coming, right? We've watched what happened with all these DTC companies that blew up and then were hemorrhaging money. 
And I think as we come to see the end of that chapter, it was so important for us to be profitable, be stable, understand the unit economics of everything and understand our customer. And then we can just put fuel on the fire. I like it. Let's get into some of like the details of it. So how do you guys, and I'm just asking, cause I have no idea how a company, like how, how do you guys think about scaling your company? Is it mostly online? Is it mostly direct to consumer? Is there a retail play at all? We've always wanted to be primarily direct to consumer. I think that since we are a subscription at our core, most of our customers are on our subscription plan for us to have that direct line of communication with them is extremely important. So we understand how they're using the product, what other needs they have that we can fill for them, as you're saying, down the line. And then Ingrid, that allows Ingrid to go very heavily into content creation and education and community building on the back end of any product that she's going to put out. So I think that when you go retail, and we do have some select retail, like Erewhon, Farm Shop, Soho House, but that's more for social proof and for, you know, brand exposure. But but those people, we don't know who's buying the product. We don't know how they interact with it. And we don't really know if it's helping them. Um, we just really wanted that direct feedback with our customers. So we'll plan for this product at least to be primarily direct to consumer. Got it. And then as it relates to the benefits of it, I, I kind of want to just make sure we touch on this everyone's going to ask, like, is it something I'm going to feel instantly? And the answer to that is probably not. Um, but what, what is like the recommendation that you guys give the, the users or the people that consume the product? Is it daily? Is it, you know, what, what is something that at least maybe with Ingrid that really you started to notice a difference? I know you mentioned a couple months, but what do you, what do you guys tell you, people who purchase the product that this is about when you're going to start to feel different or, or experience something new? So you're absolutely right. So if you purchase the smoothies and you have them let's say for breakfast. And then for the rest of the day, you're going to the Jack in the box drive through mm -hmm. and you're super stressed <laughs> out. You're not sleeping. You're drinking tap water. Nothing's going to help you. Not, not, <laughs> your, not your vitamin C bottle, not your vitamin D bottle. Nothing is going to help you. And right. so it's, I always tell people, it's not always about your diet, but it's also about the environment around you, the relationships around you. And I call it your orbital junk what's around you. Hmm. This is why it's so important for us to be able to be build a community and people have access to us. If you have any questions or if you have any health concerns about, you know, or any issues, people could always email me directly and I email back right away. So that's the, the most important part to build a relationship with, with our customers. Mm -hmm. And so the best way to have a smoothies is to I usually tell people start with breakfast, right? Because breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And if you are someone that's prone to chronic stress, if you skip breakfast, you're going to build up that cortisol that is already accumulating in your body. And that's one of the main reasons why people don't feel hungry in the mornings. It's because cortisol really stops digestion and it stops all the non-vital functions. So just think about it. When you're running away from a, from a lion, are you going to be worried about eating? A, 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 what are you going to have for dinner? Are you going to be worried about mating? <laughs> no. When no. you're running from a lion, your body's going to give you all the energy you need for your, in your muscles, and it's going to stop anything that it doesn't need in order for you to have the most energy as possible mm -hmm. to function and survive. And so um, I always tell people, start with breakfast and stop having drinking coffee without anything else is because it's like getting in your car and like stepping on the on the on the gas pedal when your when your car is on empty. <laughs> All right, so I have so many questions. So we had a, a ketosis expert on the podcast yeah. who was also on Netflix. And so he came on. We were talking about intermittent fasting, ketones, the whole bit. So my morning and this is an opportunity for you to change my life. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> so every morning I start my day with just espresso. My whole life, I've never been hungry in the morning. It's not, I wish I was. My wife, she wakes up and she's starving. And so she just leans in heavy on breakfast. Breakfast is probably your favorite meal. I've just never been the hungry guy. And so for me, intermittent fasting has been so easy because it's like, I'm not hungry when I wake up anyway. And even if I work out, so I can wake up, I can do a workout first thing in the morning and I'm like still not hungry. Obviously I'll drink water and a bunch of other stuff, but it's usually around like 11 or 12 to which I'll like start my digestive system and break my fast. 
is that terrible? Is that what you're, is that what, give me the no, breakdown. I, I no? say if it's terrible. So if you're feeling good yeah. and you are, the most important thing is if you're able to sleep throughout the night without waking up once, then by all means, continue to do it. And if all your foundations are great, if you're drinking really good quality water, if you're not drinking tap water, and if you're really mm -hmm. like everything else is perfect, your foundations are great, then by all means, you could do all these fancy things. You could do intermittent fasting, you could do keto, you could do like a submerge yourself in ice water. But most people are not there because their basic foundations sure. are really messed up. So yeah. just imagine someone that is not sleeping throughout the night, someone who is not, you know, drinking tap water, someone who is uh, super stressed out and is not able to regulate their, their glucose in their body. Mm -hmm. How are you going to make them, you know, get into ice water? <laughs> Yeah. That increases your cortisol. So how are they going to uh, have a, a four day water fast when, you know, it's just going to increase your, your stress levels even more. And so I, I gotcha. always tell people, start with your foundations first, make sure that everything is good. Then you can start other fancy things that you know you want to do. Got it. It sounds like I'm a little bit further along in the journey, but I totally agree exactly. with you. Yeah. This isn't yeah. like a, it's not an overnight thing. You have to take into account everything that you're doing, your sleep, your exercise, hopefully you're not eating fast food. I mean, or just processed food in general. Let's give people, so each one of you, let's share what is your diet? Either one of you can start. What's, what's the diet that you find to be, you know, what works? What keeps you guys in your Zen? Cause it's a stressful time too, right? Let's not pretend that starting a company is not stressful. It's inherently, so I have rewired my brain to a point where the philosophy of, you know, I'm just at a point where stress to me is, is a friend, we hang out, we're good. Um, it doesn't bother me. I can, I can pick to shut my monkey brain off. I can pick to, you know, I'm, I've done a lot of work to get here, but let's talk about your own individual diets. What I, I could start. So that's great. So as long as you have all the tools that you need, and there's a lot of tools that you could use for, for stress. So if your stress is your friend and then you have the tools after you get out of work, you either meditate or you do, you know, you take care of yourself and you have, you know, room, you, you're not sitting on your desk doing the, the quarantine pose, you know, that everyone does, which is like <laughs> sitting on the couch with a laptop on their belly. That's um, funny. If there's movement, because it means circulation, you could stop circulation just by sitting for hours at a time. So great. If you have those tools, that's amazing. So what I do, and when I had Crohn's, there's, there's a lot of food that I couldn't eat. After I set the foundation and I, I started to really put everything in my mouth and be conscious about like everything that I put in my mouth, everything that I ate and I eat has to be nutrient dense. And I always think about like, is there enough fat soluble vitamins? Is there enough polyphenols in my food? And if I look at my plate and it's not colorful enough, I'll just throw in some, I mean, I have a whole cabinet full of superfoods. So I'll just throw in some powders on top or I'll make a tincture or I'll make something. But basically my diet consists of, I don't restrict myself. I eat everything, everything, as long as it's whole, mm -hmm. whole foods. Mm -hmm. So I have dairy. I'm a big proponent of dairy, I have, but it has to be raw and grass fed from Jersey cows because it's the most nutrient dense. I have cheese, which also is raw. I have, uh, all my meats have to be grass fed and I pick a farm. And I get, I get to know the farm and I talk to the, the founders and then I, I, that's where I get my meats from. Same thing with chicken, same thing with everything else that I'm, uh, anything, any animal product. I, I don't restrict any carbohydrates or any major macronutrient. I feel like all the macronutrients are super important. They have a function. So yeah, so it's very, very balanced with all the macronutrients, whole foods. That's basically my entire diet. All right, next up. What does your daily diet look like? It's going to sound like a lot of a product plug, but I definitely drink the smoothies for breakfast and lunch every day. Okay. I have, as you know, starting a company takes all your energy. And so for me to have something really easy and nutrient dense in a minute, mm -hmm. I just throw in a piece of fruit and almond milk and ice and extremely filling and really helps with my energy and my focus. Um, I'll do that breakfast and lunch. And then, uh, you know, other than that, dinner vegetables or clean proteins. I kind of fall in that, that habit of having the same thing day after day. So it's nice 
to be able to rotate the different flavors and everything. But yeah, just trying to clean. I mean, I spent, I was vegan for about 10 years and I carried the aftermath, the health issues of that with me for some time and finally was able to start eating more balanced and including the right types of non-vegan foods, we'll call them, back into my diet. And I've been much, much, much healthier since then. Um, I also was in a position where my doctor said, oh, just take you know, birth control and hormones and you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> Not an answer. It's such a crazy answer. Like, like, how is that the best we can do today? That's so dumb. It's like someone saying, oh, take a Flintstone tablet. Your life will change. It's like, <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. Right. It doesn't. And it just puts you in an even worse position. So I, you know, 10 years into veganism, found a Chinese medicine practitioner and I tried everything to make it work. And at the end of the day, to, to get off, you know, the synthetic hormones and make it work at the end of the day, it just didn't work for me. And it might work for some people, but for me, it didn't work. So yeah. I try and make sure to eat a little bit more balanced now. And it doesn't mean you have to take huge strides away from being plant-based, but once in a while, um, at least for me, I need to eat red meat, which is actually bizarre, but it's the only thing I really need to eat. Like, I'm kind of the same way. I do vegan, the vegan diet, basically Monday to Thursday. I want to switch gears here for a minute. So one of the things when I first got into biohacking was basically when I was like in startup, right? And it was like, we're working all the time and everything you put in your body becomes super important. And so to your point around how you have, you know, two of, of your product a day makes a tremendous amount of sense because it's one highly efficient, but it's also, you're putting really important things into your body. And so I love that. I really love the marketing. It's super beautiful. These are the things I actually love. I love when founders do things like this because obviously this is like, it's a reflection of, of you, right? And so I just love, whenever I get a product, the first thing I look for isn't so much the product itself. It's like, what are they telling me about their company and their brand? I love that you guys did this. Um, it's super well done, super beautiful. When it goes to like how you guys think about scaling your business, there's so much here, right? It's, it's wellness. You're touching on wellness. You're, touch, you're touching on holistic medicine. You're, you're touching on a whole bunch, but obviously to scale and win a market, you have to focus. And so what are the avenues that you guys are, are focusing heavy into? Yeah. So we're looking at the smoothies and, you know, this focus on be it breakfast or lunch, depending on your eating schedule, like it's, it's really step one and it's an easy step it takes a minute and to your question you asked before about how soon will you feel effects we've had people say within 30 minutes they feel different within the first two days within the first week so it's not your basic powder that you're putting in a blender it's something that really you will feel a difference and if you don't to what ingrid said it's probably because it's being followed up by something extremely unhealthy mm. um so we really want to be able to kind of carry on a product line that will be really easy for people to use in their lives. They don't have to think much about it, but will have great impact. So we really want to not task you with having to make big shifts in your daily routine, but small things that will make a big difference. And Ingrid's going to make a lot of content around why that matters. Because I think something when you're creating habitual change, if you don't understand the why behind it, it won't last, right? So if we're looking for a quick fix, maybe we'll do something for a month and then go back to our old habits, either once we've achieved what we're trying to or give up because we didn't achieve it. Um, so we really want to make sure that we're able to offer these simple solutions, but not only that, offer the community support and offer the content to be able to create lasting change. I like it. And when you guys think about next steps for your business, is it fundraising? What does that look like? Yeah, it'll definitely be fundraising um, and bringing on the right people. You know, it's it's still a party of two, so <laughs> that's good in the short term. But um, as you're saying, it kind of is masochistic to keep it that way for too long. Well, I love the ethos of the company. I mean, I think that's that's the that's the best way to start a company when you're really trying to solve a problem. Um, there's another company I can think of where there's a individual who his daughter was was in a feeding tube essentially and she was on it for a long time and nothing was changing and the doctors were like look we should just basically let her go and he was looking at all the ingredients and he found casein was in there and casein is also found in elmer's glue and this thing got him now here's the thing casein you could google it today and you it wouldn't actually say it's bad it would say something to the effect of it's a protein found in dairy 
uh, has links to carcinogens. And so even today in 2020, no one really knows if casein is bad for you. However, he got obsessed with this detail and got really upset. And so then he got, did something very similar to what you, what you did to your, you know, for your company. And he created a company that now exists called Kate Farms, very successful. And it's all super clean products meant for people that need feeding tubes. And his daughter today is healthy. Um, she's at the proper weight for her age. And it took her about five, it took him about five years. And before this, he was lost. I mean, he was a lost soul, frankly. And this really helped him uh, rediscover himself, but also solve a problem for him and his daughter. And now he's pretty, basically like a household name as it relates to to that product. And so that's amazing. Crazy. So, you know, you guys have a lot of upside. I know you're just getting started, but I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your journey and you're starting it off the right foot, which is, which is to help people and to solve your own problem, which I think is so important. Where can people help you or, or support or follow? Give everyone the socials. Sure. Yeah. And in Instagram, we're just at two soul wellness, it's T U S O L wellness. And then our website's twosoulwellness.com and DM Ingrid, email me. We're yeah. here. We love hearing from people. Awesome. And obviously I've had the product. I'm a big fan. Um, we're doing a giveaway on it too. So stay tuned for that. And thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming on the podcast. Thank you, thank you so much for having us.